Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Over the last couple weeks, I have received quite a few messages from viewers and I have decided to address some of the most frequently asked questions on this video. I have a list over here with questions or with um, statements and I would like to tell you a bit about them. So one of the most commonly asked questions is regarding cage size. If you haven't seen my cage tour video, then you can see right now I have a pretty big cage and I'm really proud of it because I think it's a decent size and um, people have been asking me quite a few times what is the minimum requirement for a sugar glider cage and um, recommended is that you keep a cage that is at least two feet deep by two feet wide by three feet high in centimeters that's 60 by 60 by 90 high Personally, I think that's a very small cage and I would only recommend it as a temporary cage either um, if your shuggy is sick or if you have to go on vacation for a couple of days and you have to take your shuggies with you. Of course, um, in the US people see this a bit differently, but in my opinion a decently sized cage is a DCN that is a double critter nation and I will post the measurements right here. I have been asked quite a few times what the maximum size for a cage is and really there is no maximum. You just, you can never have too big of a cage, only a too small one. So if you have a room to spare, for example, then you can convert it in a sugar glider room. I know quite a few people, they have sugar rooms but they still keep them in cages, they only take them out for playtime, that's quite alright. That being said, regardless of the cage size you will choose, you have to make sure that the bar spacing is small enough because it shouldn't be more than half an inch, otherwise your gliders could get out of the cage, you don't want to risk that. And also you want to make sure that the coating is safe for sugar gliders. In the description box below, I will post a link to a website where you can read all about sugar gliders in general and especially about housing and the right cage for them. The doors should be of a decent size and allow you to easily reach in all over the cage and also to put in and to take out different objects that belong inside like the wheel after cleaning it or their kitchen, their glider kitchen. So as you can see my doors are pretty big and I can easily climb inside of the cage when I want to clean it, which I usually do, but they don't really have to be this big, you just want to be able to reach everywhere inside of the cage. Of course the DCN offers two doors that open all the way, so you have easy access to the whole cage and that's why I think the cages are pretty awesome. You will probably not be able to purchase this kind of cage if you live in the US. But I think that the Devil Critter Nation is also a very good cage for shuggies and it's probably even less expensive. A statement I have come across is that sugar gliders don't bite and that's simply not true. They have teeth so they will bite. Especially in the beginning when they still don't know you, they will bite hard. And the one secret is to not pull away when they do that because you will condition them to do it more. They will learn that as soon as they bite, you will pull your hands away and you will leave them alone. So they will bite again the next time you try to reach in. You have to keep quiet and just accept it and try not to move when they do it so that they know that it doesn't have an effect on you and then they will eventually stop. Of course, some shuggies still like to groom you and they will bite when they groom you. Oreo, for example, really likes to bite me when he's inside of my shirt and he's not sleeping and Dobby really likes to bite my scalp whenever my hair is open. That's why whenever I have Dobby on me, I will always keep my hair up in a bun and even then I have to make sure that he doesn't reach my scalp because as soon as he does, I think it might be my shampoo, I'm not sure, but he always tries to bite my scalp and it's really painful. Other than that, you probably have seen Dobby in my introduction video and you know by now that he is a really sweet boy and he's not aggressive at all, but I think he just wants to groom me. Actually, it's a really good tip that if you have longer hair, you keep it up in a bun whenever you're handling your shoe gliders, not only because they might get aggressive or want to groom your scalp, 
but also because the loose strands of hair might get tangled around their toes and cut off blood circulation and that's really a bad thing because they can you know lose their toes another misconception is that they will not pee on you because they sleep on you and they do not pee wherever they sleep that's simply not true. They will pee on you. As soon as they wake up, as soon as they are awake, they will pee if they are on you. It doesn't really matter if they're on you or if they're somewhere else. They will just pee. They will have the urge and they will do it. So if you don't want to be peed on, then you want to either let them roam inside of the cage for 10 to 15 minutes after they've woken up or you just have to live with it, of course. I personally just have a lot of different spare clothes and I just wear them whenever I play with the shuggies and then throw them in a washer afterwards. I don't mind them peeing on me. I take a shower after I have my bonding time with them anyway. But of course, if you don't want them to do it, then just leave them inside of the cage for a little while after they've woken up. People have asked me if they get along with other pets and the answer is really quite simple. They might, but they shouldn't. I know they're not rodents and that they don't smell like rodents, but cats might still want to catch them and play with them whenever they move around. They're just fluffy little balls. You want to keep your sugars separate from other pets. Among others, cat saliva is toxic to sugar gliders and will most probably kill them. So if the cat only wants to play with the sugar and not really bite, they might still die from it. I've seen a case documented with pictures and it was really a terrible story. The sugar glider simply died because uh, cat saliva is toxic to them and the vet couldn't do anything to save him. So you really don't want them to come near cats. And um, if the animal is smaller, then the sugar glider might try to eat that other animal. For example, they like to prey on birds in the wild. so. You can't have your canary bird housed together with your sugar gliders or even in the same room when they are awake at the same time because then one of them might die. Leashes are not okay for sugar gliders. They can strangle them, they can hurt them. Whenever the sugars try to glide, they can hurt their little wings, their little flaps over here because of the restriction from the leash. You really do not want to put a leash on a sugar glider. You can bond with them, you can take them with you inside of a bonding pouch. Do not keep them in leashes, please. Oh, and no diapers. No good. I know many people use unsafe wheels and I can't change all of your minds, but really just think about it. Many stores recommend you use the wooden wheel and they're really not safe. I know they're called glider safe or specifically made for gliders. They're really, really bad. I'm just going to ask you to please go to Google and Google Wodent Wheel Sugar Glider Accident. Take a look at the pictures and decide for yourself if you really want to risk it. I personally would never put a wheel with a middle bar inside of my Shuggies cage. I have been asked a couple of times if they smell. If you take care of them properly, then they won't smell as bad. But they still have a smell, they're animals. Every animal has a scent and even us humans have a personal scent. If you keep their cage clean and if you clean their wheels regularly, if their pouches are cleaned regularly, then they will not smell as bad. Also, if you have a male, then you will want him neutered because intact males smell a lot. That being said, if you clean the cage too much or too often, then they will want to mark the cage and that will smell pretty bad. So always leave a couple used objects or dirty objects inside of the cage. Don't clean it all at once because then you will not like the smell of it, probably. There's a common myth circulating that if you spend enough time with them, then sugar gliders don't need company. That's not true. They need a partner. They need at least one cage mate, if not more. People think that just because you spend a lot of time with them, they will be happy, but they won't. They really need someone they can socialize with and they can't really socialize with you. So make sure that you purchase a cage mate for your sugar glider. Personally, I think that you should start with two and in my honest opinion, a good feeder will only sell you two sugar gliders if you don't have any. At least in Europe, they're pretty strict about it as far as I'm aware. 
and most breathers will refuse to sell you only one sugar glider if you don't have any others. So if you plan on purchasing a sugar glider, then make sure that you purchase a second one soon after or even better, just purchase two at once. Personally, I would recommend you keep at least three sugar gliders inside of a cage just because I've seen too many people either trying to quickly rehome their glider after the partner has died or find a new cage mate. And I think that if you have three of them, then it won't be as hard on the other two when one of the partners dies. Another big misconception is that sugar gliders need their teeth trimmed. Apparently many vets suggested, please don't. They are not rodents, their teeth will not grow back. If a vet says you have to trim your sugar's teeth, then you need a new vet. Some people have asked me how noisy they are during the night. And I will say they're not the quietest, but they're not really loud. I have four of them, but it's really not that bad. Sometimes Oreo likes to bark during the night for a couple minutes, but usually he will stop after two to three minutes if I don't pay any attention to him. Sometimes they jump inside of the cage, they jump from the top to the bottom and that makes some noise, or they play with their toys. They're living creatures, they move around, they jump around, they play with their toys, sometimes they have little spats. They, they will make different kinds of noises during the night, they are not the quietest of the animals. If you want a quiet animal, and especially if the cage is inside of your bedroom, then I suggest you get a different one. Because sugar gliders are awake during the whole night, and they will play and they will make noise. Another big misconception is that parents will not breed with their offspring, and that's simply not true. If you want to keep related sugar gliders' houses together, then please make sure that you neuter your males. Some people think that sugar gliders are easy to care for and they don't need a vet. That's also not true at all. Accidents happen and you want to make sure that you have a vet that you can trust in case of an emergency. Sometimes they will get sick and you will not know what's happening, either from improper diet or from ingesting something unhealthy. And that's when you will want to take your sugar to a vet. Too many people think that pellets are sufficient as a diet for sugar gliders. And that's simply not true. They need fruits, they need vegetables, and they need protein, and they also need their vitamins. Some people have argued that the diet I use, the SGS2, is too expensive, and that pellets or instant diets are cheaper. I strongly suggest you look into a proper diet if you want to own an exotic pet. They're exotic animals. They need a proper diet. They are not dogs, they are not cats. You can't just buy canned food for them. You can't just buy instant stuff for them because it's not healthy. If you want to own an exotic pet, then you have to be able to provide them with the best care. That means a good cage, safe stuff, and a good diet. And if you can't do that, or if you think it's too expensive, then please just don't. Don't purchase them. Purchase a different pet. It's really the best for them and for you. I'm not saying that the SGS diet is the only good diet for them. You have a couple different diets. You have the HPW, you have the BML, the TPG, AWD, and so on. There's really a longer list of diets you can choose from, but please do your research and pick a good diet for them. Don't just let them have pellets. Don't just serve an apple a day. That's really not enough. Wild sugar gliders are not rodents. They will still chew on stuff. You do not want anything with an electrical cord inside of the cage. No heat rocks, no heat blankets, and they don't need heat lamps either. If you want to keep them warm, then put a cage cover over the cage. You have to heat the room they're in. You can use a space heater, you can use a couple different things, but not inside of the cage, not too close to the cage. There's a common misconception that older sugar gliders will not bond to you. That's really not true at all. If you've seen my introduction video, then you know that Dobby has come to me at 13 years old and he is very bonded to me. I have been asked how often it is okay to bathe your sugar glider and the answer is never. You should never bathe your sugar glider. If they smell 
then maybe they are intact. Maybe their cage is too dirty. Maybe their toys are, their pouches, their cage sets. There's plenty of reasons why a sugar glider would smell, but bathing them is not the solution. Sugar gliders bathe themselves. They don't need you to wash them. And getting them wet is bad for their health. They can get sick, they can get cold. That's, it's really, don't, don't bathe your sugar gliders. Just don't. Yes, you can take them out with you all day. Just keep them in a closed bonding pouch or bonding scarf. Put a piece of apple inside in case they get hungry. They might pee on you, so be aware of that when you take them out. No, you shouldn't change their sleeping patterns. You probably could, but it's really unhealthy for them. If they wake up on their own during the day, then it's simply because they feel like it or they feel peckish or thirsty or whatever. There is a difference if you take them out in the evening just to play with them a little bit. So if you take them out, for example, a couple hours before they wake up so that you can bond with them in a tent or in the bathroom or whatever, that's really okay. But you can't just leave the lights on during the night so that they sleep and then just cover everything during the day so it's really dark and they wake up and they play. That's not how it should work. You have to be able to change your schedule to work around this sleeping cycle. You don't want to mess up their health. One last thing I would like to add to this video is the fact that sugar gliders do not need us, but we need them. Keep that in mind because some people think that if you don't bond with them, they will be mad and angry and whatever, and it's simply not true. Sugar gliders are really happy as long as they have company and a decent cage. They don't really need us. We need them. They make us happy. We find comfort in bonding with them, in playing with them. It's really for us, not for them. So keep that in mind. If you don't have the time to play with them every night, they won't be sad. They won't be disappointed. As long as they have each other, they will be happy. Bonding is something we do for ourselves. We bond with them because it's fun for us, because we feel good when we do it. So keep that in mind because too many people believe that you should bond with them daily, otherwise they will get depressed. No, they will not. They will be less bonded to you and that might make you sad, but they will be still quite happy as long as they have each other. Only one more thing I would like to add before ending this video is the following. If you post in the comments that you do not agree with my way of keeping them, then I don't mind. It's your personal opinion. You have one, I have one. But if you suggest a different channel in the comments for people to have a look at and get their information from, then I will have a look at that channel. And if I find that they promote things that I consider unsafe, like an unhealthy staple diet or unsafe wheels, a too small cage, I will have to delete that comment. That being said, I don't mind if you suggest any different channels as long as they promote safe stuff. A few sugar glider related channels I like on YouTube are Lisa Lou, Lily Bell Looks, and I think the third one is called Sugar Gliders and Kids, Kids and Gliders, something like that. I will post the links to these channels in the description box below in case you're interested. Thank you very much for watching this video and if you have any unanswered questions please post them in the comments below and i'm open for suggestions in case you have any requests for future videos as i'm running out of ideas so please post your suggestions in the comments as well i always read them thank you for watching please subscribe to this channel if you want to see more on sugar gliders please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or found it helpful and i'll see you next time bye Thank you.